If you've been curious about the hacker applications of steganography, today we'll show you a technique to hide and then execute a payload in an image file on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Steganography is the practice of hiding things in an image, and in previous episodes we've covered how to do this, but today we're going to take it a step further and actually attempt to execute code that we've hidden inside an image. Now why might we want to do this? Well, there are actually instances of botnets being controlled by checking a Twitter feed and then downloading an image that controls hidden command tags. And this is interesting because typically the way that a malware researcher would find something like this is by focusing on the communication between the command and control server and infected computers. By instead directing the traffic to a public IP address like Twitter, you'd be able to get around your IP getting flagged and all your bots getting taken down, which is a pretty ingenious way of getting around being detected. Now we're going to be following a guide that was written by Tokyo Neon on Nullbyte, and this is a really cool guide that's linked in the description if you want to check it out further. In order to follow it, you'll need a macOS computer because that's what the guide was written for, although this might also work on a Linux system as well because the commands are generally pretty much the same. Once you have a Linux system or a macOS computer ready to go, then we can begin. Today, we're going to learn some of the advanced applications of steganography by taking a payload, encoding it, and then trying to both download and execute the payload all in one command. Now, obviously, this is pretty cool and could be used for a variety of different applications, but today we're going to keep things pretty simple and just encode a payload that creates a file on our in our test folder. So first step is we're going to need to actually create a payload and we're going to encrypt, well, we're going to change it into a base64 string. I almost said uh, encrypt, but it is definitely not encryption. So in order to do that, we will first need to determine the type of command we're going to encode. In this case, we're just going to say touch uh, tilde desktop slash hacked, and that will create a file called hacked within that directory. Now I'm gonna modify this just a little bit so that instead it creates the file in the directory I'm currently working in, but otherwise it should be pretty much exactly the same. So if I were to press return, then you can see that this is the base64 encoded string for what we want to work with. So this is what we'll actually be encoding in order to hide what it is our program will actually be doing. So if someone were just looking at this without knowing what this were and encoding it from, uh, or decoding it from base64, we wouldn't immediately be uh, tipped off to what this payload was supposed to do. So if we follow the guide here, we can see the next step is going to be to download XF tool. And if you don't already have this, then the best way to do that is if you're on a Linux system, doing an apt-get update and apt-get install XF tool. Now, if you're on a Mac like me, then this won't do anything. Uh, because if you type apt install anything, then uh, you'll notice that Mac doesn't have that packet manager. However, if you install the um, homebrew, uh, library, then you should be able to install this just by changing out the apt get for brew and then install xf tool. So on my system, it should already have it installed and fully updated. But if you're running a Mac and you haven't downloaded this before, then you should now have the xf tool available for you to modify the data in pretty much any image file you want to work with. So once you have that tool, we can explore what it can do. Um, by first looking at the way that it will be able to strip information from an image. Now, if you have an image that you're working with, and I have, if I type ls, I should have two different images in here that I'm going to work with. One of them is called photo, and the second is called warming. Now, both of these actually already have some metadata in them. So if I type exif tool and photo, oops, photo.jpg, uh, you can see that there's actually a very, very, very large payload encoded in the certificate se uh, section, which isn't immediate, ob immediately obvious if we were to just navigate and click on the photo. See, looks like a regular photo, 
nothing special going on here. We open it. We can even go into the properties and kind of dig around a little bit. Uh, and there's, there's nothing that immediately says, hey, there's a giant payload encoded onto this image. Instead, we just have a plain text payload that's been encoded here. And the way that we can do this is to first start with the image and then uh, strip it of all of the available metadata that's there. So you can see that the command to do that isn't much different from the command to just kind of see the uh, exif data. So if we type tac all and then equals and then just photo.jpeg, then I can type ls, it should still be here. And you can see it automatically saves uh, the original over there. Um, and if I were to run XF tool again, hey, we don't have the big crazy payload that we had before. Now we're working with a fresh start and we can start to encode our own payload and make it something maybe a little bit more sneaky. Maybe something like what we were working with a minute ago when we were trying to encode this payload. We can just copy this here. Once we have this, we can see that the next step for creating this is to type XF tool. Actually, I'll clear it. And I'll make this a little larger so you guys can see it. <clears throat> Certificate equals, and then you'll use quotes, a uh, single quote in order to enclose the string. The base64 encoded string here, like this. And then the name of the file. There we go, photo.jpeg. So if I press return, oh, well, that should be right, let's see. Oh, well, I'm saying it twice. So <laughs> let's make sure that we're not calling the tool twice in a row. There we go. Okay, so now we can see we still have the photo here. And if we are gonna go back up and run this, we can see, if we scroll up a little bit, that in the certificate section, we now have our payload, our base64 encoded payload. Meaning if we upload this to a service that does not immediately strip this off, and unfortunately, a lot of services will either inject their own metadata, which is very annoying if it's just something like an ad, or they will just strip it off so that you don't accidentally take a picture in your bathroom or something and then include the address to your house. So this is something that if we're just say using something like TinyPic, which does not uh, strip off the data, we could take a payload, encode it, and then upload it so that it actually is ready to be used in a command. Now, the way that we can do this is to use a stager like this. Now, let's go ahead and put this into a terminal window and see what it looks like. So what this command is doing is actually a couple of different things. First, it's creating the variable p, and then it's basically saying that p equals whatever is inside uh, everything from here all the way to the other side of this parenthesis over to here. After it does everything that happens inside the parenthesis, it will basically do an eval of p, which means it's going to execute whatever p comes out to. So inside of p, we have a request to download an image. And once we download that image, we're actually going to be reading the binary data by grepping through it and looking for examples of our payload, which is uh, sort of located by looking for the beginning of the cert. So that's for the certificate, and that's what we put in there in order to make sure we could find it uh, by gripping through just the binary data, which I have to say is a pretty clever way of being able to locate the metadata uh, because otherwise it might be a little bit difficult to skip through and extract that metadata without getting into the binary. So next we're going to pipe that through and you said to cut out basically everything before and after the information we need so that we're not getting the description of the metadata or anything else that might pollute the actual base64 string that we need to decode. Now finally we take that purified and stripped away string that is just the base64 data and decode it from base64 so that we get the end result and then put that into the eval. So the end result of that is again we take the image we look through the binary data to find the certificate metadata string. We strip out everything except that base64 string, convert it back into plain text, and then run it uh, as a evaluated variable. 
So all in all, very cool. And it allows us to see that, hey, we actually have the ability to take an image from a website or from social media, something like that, download it and execute some hidden data to run it as a script. So I can't stress enough, this is super, super cool. And we're gonna test it by seeing if we can create the hacked file within our file system here by uploading uh, something and seeing if it works. So I've already prepared a file here. And if I type, you can see I've created one called warming. So if I go ahead and open this, you can see that there's a whole bunch of information about this, but there's in our certificate, a base64 encoded string that is the exact same payload we were just working with. So it just creates a file called hacked on the uh, within the folder that we're currently in. Cool, so with that being said, we want all this metadata to survive when we upload it. So I'm going to use a hosting service, which I've gone ahead and done so here. And if we look inside the folder, you can see we are uploading a wonderful awareness image to let people know uh, with this regular walrus how important it is to stop global warming. Nothing suspicious here, just a regular walrus telling you something that you should know. So we upload this and we get this direct link for layouts. And this should give us what we need in order to attempt to run this. So let's go back to our terminal window and we'll go up to that command we had before and we'll substitute in this uh, uploaded image for the example and see if we can get this to actually execute and create the test file. All right, I'm gonna type ls and there we go. We have created a, a, a file called my fat bird. I guess that was a secret payload, but really this could have been anything. I could have reformatted the hard drive. It really doesn't matter because I'm logged in as root. So anything that this would have downloaded and, and executed would have been executed with my privileges. So this is just one example of something you can do in a very simple way to use steganography to execute some code on a computer. And you could adapt this to a USB rubber ducky payload or some other sort of stager that allows you to use this first step of downloading an image to extract payload data and even on a continuing basis, maybe update a whole bunch of infected machines. While this is an interesting application for the ways you can hide data in an image, you can take it even further by creating a USB rubber ducky payload. Now one way you could do this is creating a stager that periodically checks a Twitter account for an image with encoded instructions, and when there's a new image that's been posted, downloads it and executes a payload onto the target's computer. Now if someone were scanning their network traffic to make sure that there was nothing malicious, simply downloading an image from Twitter occasionally probably wouldn't be that suspicious, especially on a network where people were occasionally browsing for recreational purposes. So this could be a way that you could avoid suspicious traffic from an IP address that might be linked to malware from actually kind of ratting out your payload if someone were actually looking for that kind of behavior. Now there's plenty of other applications for this and I'll kind of leave that up to your imagination, but I also want to shout out to Tokyo Neon for writing this incredible article, which you can check out linked in the description. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts or ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.